We're starting today with operator. How productive they can be, how creative they can be. This is gonna go live today in the United States for pro users. And it'll be other countries soon. Europe will unfortunately take a while. Europe will unfortunately take a while. Okay, so OpenAI just dropped their agent AI bomb and they're calling it operator. Let's be real. After sitting through that whole launch event, I'm left scratching my head wondering, is that it? They built up this massive hype around independent AI agents that are going to revolutionize everything. And what did they show us? They presented this operator as some kind of revolutionary agent. And honestly, the more I think about it, the more it resembles a tech demo from a decade ago, dressed up in 2025 marketing jargon. Restaurant bookings and grocery orders, that's their big reveal. That's the agent AI that's going to redefine productivity and creativity. Come on, OpenAI, you're pulling our leg, right? I'm feeling less like I've witnessed a revolution and more like I've just watched a slightly clunkier version of web automation tools we've had for years. Let's dissect this demo piece by piece. Because the devil, as they say, is in the details. And in this case, the details are laughably underwhelming. They showcased operator clicking around on websites. OpenTable and Instacart were the chosen paragons of digital complexity, apparently. And yes, technically it did navigate those sites. But the execution was glacial. It was like watching a snail race a tortoise in slow motion. Each click, each page load, each text entry felt agonizingly protracted. This isn't the seamless, lightning-fast automation we expect in 2025. This is more like dial-up internet speeds in an AI agent. They tout productivity gains, but I'm pretty sure I could book a restaurant and order groceries faster myself, even while juggling flaming torches and solving a Rubik's Cube. They keep throwing around buzzwords like productivity, creativity, and AGI. But let's break down what Operator actually did in their demo. It clicked around on websites. Yes, it navigated OpenTable and Instacart. Groundbreaking stuff, right? Except watching it in action was painful. It was slow, deliberate, almost hesitant in its actions. This isn't some lightning fast, efficient agent streamlining your life. This is like watching someone who's barely computer literate slowly peck at a keyboard. And for all that slowness, it still needed constant, and I mean constant handholding. And the constant confirmations, oh, the confirmations. It was like watching an AI agent with severe trust issues. Every single step was punctuated by a pop-up box begging for human validation. Should I proceed? Is this time acceptable? Confirm reservation? It wasn't an agent acting on my behalf. It was an AI begging for constant permission to breathe. The entire concept of an autonomous agent was completely undermined by this incessant need for human babysitting. They keep hammering home the agent terminology, but it's more like a highly dependent, incredibly slow and perpetually unsure digital assistant. Are we supposed to be empowered by this or just eternally frustrated by its agonizingly slow handheld progress? The promise of delegation evaporates when the delegation process itself becomes more cumbersome than doing the task manually. Did you notice how every single step of the way operator was popping up with these little confirmation boxes? Should I do this? Is this okay? Let's do it. It felt less like an independent agent and more like a glorified macro that's terrified of making a mistake. They even admitted it makes embarrassing mistakes. So the entire premise of an agent Something that acts on your behalf independently is immediately undermined by the fact that you have to constantly second guess and approve its every move. Are we supposed to delegate tasks to this thing to free up our time? Or are we just shifting the cognitive load to constantly monitoring and correcting its actions? It feels like more work, not less. Would you like to access the world's most advanced AI models through a single platform without the hassle of juggling multiple platforms? Meet Chat LLM by Abacus AI, your all-in-one AI powerhouse. With this essential tool, you can easily access advanced AI models, including O1, O1 Mini, GPT-40, and Claude 3.5 Sonnet. Plus, it's got some seriously smart features. Route LLM selects the optimal model for your request automatically. Search LLM uses online resources to find and deliver the freshest data available. Need your AI to sound less robotic? You can use Humanize to modify speech patterns. And get this, use Flux 1.1 Pro Ultra, Ideagram, or Recraft to create beautiful visuals through their advanced generating capabilities. You can make videos with a single input by using advanced video models, including Kling, Luma, Runway, and Hiluo. 
Coders will appreciate how the Artifacts feature simplifies their app development process. You can produce documents effortlessly while handling PDF data analysis easily. Through AI Engineer, users can design their own customized chatbots. And the best part? You can access all these features today for just $10 per month through this platform. You can start with first month free when you click on the link provided. To get to the innovative technology powering this thing, they bragged about using screenshots and simulating mouse clicks and keyboard inputs, completely circumventing APIs. They presented this as some kind of ingenious breakthrough, a way to unlock the entire web for AI. Except in the real world, in the world of actual software engineering, this approach is considered, well, archaic. Screen scraping? Mouse click simulation? These are techniques from the dark ages of web automation. APIs exist to provide structured, efficient, and reliable communication between systems. Bypassing them in favor of brute force pixel peeping and click mimicking is not innovation. It's a regression. It's like celebrating the invention of the horse-drawn carriage after the invention of the automobile. Because, hey, carriages don't need roads, they can go anywhere. Yes, technically true, but utterly missing the point of progress and efficiency. It's a clunky, brittle, and inherently less reliable method. And they're trying to sell this as the future? It's baffling. And the rollout strategy? A masterclass in artificial scarcity and geographical favoritism? Available today, they declared with fanfare. But then the asterisk appears. In the United States for pro users. Oh, and Europe? Sorry, Europe, you'll have to wait a while. And the vast majority of paying OpenAI users on the Plus plan? Coming in the coming months. This isn't a product launch. It's a geographically and user tier restricted beta test. Masquerading is a major unveiling. It's like announcing a revolutionary new car, but then admitting it's only available in one state, only to people who already own a yacht, and you can only drive it on Tuesdays. The research preview label just further reinforces this feeling of a limited, experimental, and frankly, premature offering. The hype machine is in overdrive, but the actual product being delivered feels incredibly thin. They dedicated a significant chunk of their presentation to safety. Safety mitigations, prompt injection monitors, user misalignment. It was a litany of safeguards. And while, again, safety is paramount, the sheer emphasis on it, combined with the constant confirmation requests in the demo, paints a picture of an underlying fragility and unreliability. If Operator were genuinely robust and trustworthy, would they need to layer on so many safety nets and user overrides? It suggests a deep-seated concern about its ability to function correctly, even on these incredibly simple demo tasks. It's like they're preemptively managing expectations for inevitable errors and missteps. And when you're entrusting an AI agent with real-world actions, even something as mundane as booking a table, reliability isn't just a feature, it's the foundation. And based on this presentation, that foundation looks decidedly shaky. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room. The blatant disconnect between operator and the actual cutting edge of AI. While OpenAI is busy patting themselves on the back for this web clicker, the open source community is surging ahead at a breakneck pace. Take DeepSeek R1, for example. Here's an open source large language model that by many accounts, not only rivals, but outperforms OpenAI's older O1 models. And let's be honest, operator feels like it's running on something akin to that. And the kicker? DeepSeek R1 is available for a fraction of the cost to run. It's democratized AI power in action. While OpenAI is locking operator behind paywalls and geographical restrictions, the open source world is offering more powerful, more accessible alternatives. It begs the question, is OpenAI truly innovating or are they just repackaging older technology with aggressive marketing and a hefty price tag? DeepSeek R1 and models like it demonstrate that true progress in AI is happening in the open collaborative space, not in closed off proprietary silos. Operator feels like a relic from a bygone era, a closed garden approach in a world that's increasingly embracing open innovation. In conclusion, OpenAI's operator launch wasn't just a letdown, it was a stark reminder of the growing chasm between closed source hype and open source progress in the AI field. The demos were underwhelming, the technology felt outdated, the rollout was exclusionary, and the value proposition was, at best, questionable. While OpenAI trumpets operator as a step towards AGI, 
It feels more like a step back in user experience and a missed opportunity to truly innovate. Compared to the dynamism and accessibility of open source models like DeepSeek R1, Operator looks less like a revolutionary agent and more like a proprietary gimmick designed to generate buzz and lock users into the OpenAI ecosystem rather than genuinely advance the field of AI. Color me not just disappointed, but actively concerned that the hype around closed source AI is starting to overshadow the real, democratizing, and far more exciting advancements happening in the open. The revolution, it seems, won't be televised or launched with a clunky web automation tool. It's happening in the open source labs quietly and powerfully, while OpenAI is busy booking restaurant tables.